And I suppose everybody will wait until somebody gets killed. And then all of a sudden you redo it and change it. You need to look at one, the timing, Birmingham Road, New Street, the New Road, and 202. And make sure it really works to the people's advantage. Otherwise, you need to take into account how you are actually diverting the traffic. Most people will come up, cut through the little uh, neighborhood and come out and come out at Stetson Middle School and that's bumper to bumper at least six hours of the day, at least. So the, the traffic can't really be shuffled off. It is a major part of, the, of why the impact that it's going to be on and why most people are here. It's a serious, serious issue. New Street, we didn't, my backyard falls onto New Street. I can see the cars lined up to the actual entrance of Cree Belly Farm. So that's pretty far, and that's 4 o'clock till about 6.30 at night that I can verify that, that they're lined up that far. That's got to be at least a quarter of a mile. So somehow, it has to be put in there that these turn lanes and everything else need to accommodate the actual real numbers of cars. <clears throat> when I said it before, Bradley told me that out of 400 houses, 71 of them would be entering the road at any given time in the morning between 6 and 8.30. That's really liar, liar, because if you can afford those houses, you're both going to have a job. So I need the board to consider the actual real traffic volume. If you don't believe me, go stand out there tomorrow morning, and now that everybody can go driving around, it's probably going to be pretty bad. Go stand out there. It'll be a good day to try it. Thursday and Friday, you cannot get out of our street. We turn right around Birmingham Road, go over Pleasant Grove Road, cut through that new little road, and come out of Stetson, which is also backed up. I don't really think the cars are going to go when they add school buses. So it's, it's not something to be blown off. There's also a mini roundabout on Westbourne Road that might not be your township, but you could certainly drive down it. It will never accommodate. There's a little mini roundabout um, right before the stop sign on uh, Deer Point Road. Um, it's by where the electric um, substation is back there. <clears throat> you couldn't get a bus or a school bus around that. Yeah. And, and a bunch of cars. You can hardly get one car around. That's a mini roundabout. So if you don't believe me, go drive on it and try it. See what happens when you get your car there. Thank you. Please consider it.
brothers responded to the previous comments, not the new revisions? Responded to the Planning Commission's comments, not to the Historic Commission's comments. The Planning Commission incorporated the uh, I was wondering if you were going to study on the project's effect on the whole values uh -huh. of the, the folks that live in the, in the immediate area. Yes, if done, but one be done that will give the homeowners of the immediate area some sort of I guess 
my concern with the applicant is the amount of traffic. So, you know, one of the topics today is traffic. Uh, and again, I apologize, I could not hear many of the comments from the audience, but I at least I could hear that some of them are concerned with the increase of traffic. So that alone, uh, I'll, I'll make the same statement, and that should be a concern of the applicant. And I, I guess I, if I'm the applicant, I would want to go into this with eyes wide open that there's already a concern there. And, and it's not getting, I'm not aware of how it's getting addressed. So does the applicant need to consider the amount of traffic and the safety at that intersection, especially since it's a school? You also have a roadway or a walkway there that is, we've addressed the concern of it being unsafe. Um, we, we are aware of people falling off of that curb and into the street because you, as you're walking on that, you can't tell the difference between the road and the sidewalk. So again, as the applicant, I would be concerned with the amount of traffic that is increasing on that road and the potential of a child falling off the curb and into the street. Are you referring to police lane? Police lane, yeah. <laughs> Who's not responsible for, for correcting the response? Yeah, my apologies, I can't hear the response. Oh, no. I don't think that's correct. So, Paul, Paul is not responsible for the, some of the items that no, people are concerned about. Sorry. Excuse me? Trying to, you might hear very well whoever is speaking. Uh, I guess it's the West Town Township host. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Why don't you just have Neil or Pete do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, some of the people in the pond have identified concerns with Orvis Web. But those are not issues that we're going to address they're not part of the Toll Brothers development. Yes, the traffic that they have is a concern, but not the other issues that you're bringing up. Can you hear me on that? It's my understanding that's to connect the road from Orvis 
Is that correct? Yes. Is that going away? No, the connector road connects West Pleasant Grove to 926. It's not going away. It was, it was my understanding, and again, I'm just like, I don't know the answer to this. Um, it was explained by the township that a crosswalk might go in from Orvis Way to that connector road. Is that still the case? That's a recommendation, yes. Will there be a light at that crosswalk? No. So, my concern would be people coming off of 202 or Orvis Way at a pretty good speed. I, I don't know where exactly the, the road is going, I'm sorry, the, the, walk, the crosswalk is going to go. So I have to assume there's a safety issue of people crossing that to get over to the other side of uh, the, the connector road. Um, How was that being handled? Well, at the moment, it's on a conceptual drawing, and I will duly note that there's a, you have a concern of pedestrians crossing that intersection. Is there any, is there a concern by the builder or the planning commission around that? Well, we're always concerned about safety. It's not, you know, we wouldn't, but whether there's a recommendation due to safety, not likely. We might remove the recommendation to safety. Yeah, and I recommendation think... relative recommendation relative to the roundabouts and traffic on the West Pleasant Grove Road would have a benefit for that potential crossing. I believe the crossing that he's referencing is the connection to the Arbor View Trails. Yes. Where Toll has at this point, as we discussed earlier, agreed to at least bring it up into the edge of their property. And then we would see and it would require some cooperation from our review to actually connect it. But Mr. Dolph, understand that this is just the first step. This is the zoning approval. And so if they get the zoning approval, we'll have to go through a process called land development. And land development is where issues like what you're raising will be dealt with. And the Township Planning Commission will, will look at that specific issue and determine if there's safety, safety concerns and whether or not some sort of pedestrian cross signal, things like that. So that level of detail is not what we're at right now. We're on zoning approval for a concept of a level of specific traffic crossings and lights, things like that. that. That level of detail will come back in the land development process. Thank you, that was very helpful. And God answer. willing, we'll be out of COVID and we can actually have these meetings live because mm -hmm. this is very difficult and we really appreciate you participating in this manner. I will say that if you have questions, again, go on the website. You'll be able to see all these alternative plans that have been presented. If you have specific questions that are not going to be able to be answered tonight, please send your email to Will Etheridge, the planning director, and he will try to answer your questions. My name is Kristen Camp and I'm the solicitor for the planning commission. Across from, you know, where they're talking about developing Cray Valley. 
I can tell you, as a resident, it will definitely impact the quality of life. No one's even brought up the quality of life. There's going to be more pollution, more congestion, more stress on everybody, higher taxes. We're talking about putting in probably all the infrastructure that's going to take long-term maintenance. That's going to cost the taxpayers money. In addition, a huge stress on the school district. And the first conditional use application, or man, it was denied. The school district declared party status. That should tell you something. There's so much um, new construction in the area. They're building an 11th elementary school. We already have three high schools, three middle schools, and now 11 elementary schools. And class size is going to increase. Taxes are going to increase. Services for the kids are going to decrease because they have to cut services somewhere. In addition to that, I am actually a realtor as well. And I can tell you that everybody in, that lives in my development, their property values will decrease because no one's going to want to live in that development. And that development has tons of kids, lots of walkers. You know, there's two bus stops, but that doesn't give you an indication of how many children are in that development. And I really hope that Thornbury Township holds their ground and does not let that connector road go through. I mean, Toll Brothers gives you bare, like, limited information. It doesn't tell you bridal with, you know, development. It goes directly into a neighborhood. And I've already seen trucks coming through bridal just to avoid the traffic on 926 and 202. And then also, you have to take into consideration the totality. You're talking about, you know, private residences, working with the church, you know, uh, 926 and 202, South New Street, Mount Pleasant Grove, Lake Grove. I mean, you know, these all seem like extremely high hurdles, you know, to have, for them to be able to even push this through. In addition to all the historical landmarks that Cray Billy means to so many people in this township, as well as environmental issues. A couple years ago, I had a foot of water in my basement. Who knows with all that development, where are going to go? Do you have a question? No, just a statement. Thank you. Myron Rubo at 1024 Dundee Road. I'm trying to wrap my head around what really is going to happen at 926 and 202. Um, you have studies that have actual numbers for additional cars, correct? Yes. Okay, let's say that we can imagine, and the fact is, you've got an F, so you really don't have to explain how it's going to get worse because it can't be worse than an F or maybe an F minus. Is that correct? No. There's worse. Uh, there's there's worse ratings for an intersection. So once you get to an F, the, the letter grade also has associated with it a number of seconds of delay. A negative one and change. So there are the letter grade categories A through F. But in addition to the letter grade, it also has a number of seconds of delay, average vehicle delay associated with it. So once you get to an F, uh, it still continues to increase in terms of delay as you add traffic. There is no letter grade worse than an F, but the, the delay results continue to increase. So what is it currently? before you start building. Again, all the details of the traffic study are posted on the Planning Commission's website. We've discussed them at length. And those details have been approved by PennDOT and the Township's engineer from a technical standpoint. So I'm not sure um, what relevance it is to go through the detailed numbers tonight with other questions to if be you answered. Me, if, ask, if I can get a number, then I will ask my question. So can you tell me about what I'm getting at is if we could magically change that to a C. Now all of a sudden we've got all these extras so, so people can get an understanding rather than going from an F10 to an F20 or whatever it is. If we were to C and we build this, you build this, what's it going to go to? Is it going to go to an F? Are we going to have a two letter degre degradation? We're not allowed to do that. So from without to with development conditions, any drop in letter grade, uh, which also has associated with it an increase of 10 seconds or greater, we would have to mitigate that. So we can't drop an intersection one or two letter grades. It's I'm, not permitted. I'm not asking you. I'm saying if we could magically change it to a C. Okay. What? Not magic. Excuse me? 
it's not possible. It, it's, it's not the reality of the requirements and, and what we have to do. Okay, you don't want to answer the question. All right, thank you. Well, can I ask Nicole, so are you saying that if PennDOT does the improvement to 926 and 202, what would the level of service be at that intersection? Has that been studied? So, as I mentioned earlier, we did look at the ultimate future condition with the development and all the growth that we're required to incorporate, and we did provide for informational purposes in the traffic study um, what that would look like with the addition of the 926 and 202 improvements. We did show that. So you'll answer her question, but you don't have to answer mine. Because yours was a hypothetical. No, I asked where it went from an F to what? And she wouldn't answer. I did ask that. I have to dig into the details, so I'll try to Hi. It's a door. Uh, my name is Ann Satterthwaite. I live at uh, 701 Weatherstone in Kaoli, but I lived here in Cheney for about 10 years, not that long ago. My question is to the Planning Commission in making the recommendation. The words I've heard from Toll all night long is if, lots of ifs, lots of maybes, some coulds, some more maybes, so some shoulds, how can you actually make a recommendation to the supervisors when there's all these outstanding maybes, could, should, uh, what if, there, there's so much nebulous information right now, I don't know how you can truly make a recommendation to the supervisors and then have them make a decision with the lack of facts coming from four brothers. They've submitted a million documents, and the document's been reviewed by the consultants, so I don't necessarily agree that there's, that the Planning Commission's recommendation will be very concrete in what they're recommending the board impose as conditions. The conditional use hearings will have testimony by experts, both Toll brothers, as well as any parties, and the planning commission will call its own experts. So the board has to render its decision based on the facts presented at that hearing, much of which will be documentary evidence. And that's why I keep saying, go to the website. There's oodles and oodles and oodles of documents that will create the factual record as to whether or not they meet the criteria and coordinates. So I don't necessarily agree with you that it's shoulds and could. There is concrete, specific things that they have committed to doing that the planning commission will recommend that the board make them. That's not what I heard from them. Well, they're talking specifically about traffic improvements that PennDOT has to approve. PennDOT is a completely separate agency. They have to get highly occupancy permits for PennDOT for all of these intersections. That's not what this is right now. This is a zoning for a type of use called a flexible development. They are showing what they think PennDOT will require them to do to get the HOPs, because that's one of the elements of the conditional use criteria. But the details of exactly what PennDOT will require, and that's what they haven't completed that yet. That hasn't been determined yet. They started that process, but it hasn't been determined. So until PennDOT goes through its full review, they can't say exactly what PennDOT will require. But if you go to the other side of, you know, the uh, spatman saying no, um, maybe the church, you know, they'll ask their church permission, they'll so see if they can get the trail easement through this person's property, you know, it's all this other stuff that, and they won't know that until they finish that process. So it's a, it's a very, you know, kind of made them go and design the intersection at New Street 926 to have left turn lanes. They did that. PennDOT is making them now go and try to acquire the right way. They did that. If, if they can't get it, PennDOT will make them do another step. And then ultimately, we kind of decision as to what has to happen. Okay. It's just not, it's just not there yet. You guys are saying. Okay, so we can't really make a recommendation yet. No, so no, it's like four. West, West Town Township cannot control what happens at that intersection. 
through their zoning approval process or through their land development approval process. If you read the Commonwealth Court decision on the first conditional use, they make that very clear. It is a NDOT jurisdiction issue. Township can't say anything about it. So they, we can't, and I think nobody wants to hear this, but it's the truth in Pennsylvania law. You can't stop development because there's a lot of traffic. That's just not what the law is. And here, unless there were conditional use standards on township roads, that because of this development they can't meet, that would be the only way the conditional use could be denied on a, on a traffic standard. When it comes to the dot roads, that's a whole different issue. They have to be able to satisfy PennDOT standards to get the HOPs needed. So again, that's a PennDOT issue. All right. And, 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 and I would say that, believe me, these are, these, these, your planning commission members are your residents. They, they feel the same way you do, but unfortunately the law is, is not necessarily like, well, because there's going to be more traffic, it can't be approved. The zoning ordinance allows this property to be developed in the manner in which Toll is suggesting, in terms of the type of development and the number of homes. Those are things that they are compliant with the ordinance on. So that's something that, that that's where the, zor that's where the, zor the zoning ordinance is written. All right. Thank you very much for that. Sure. Bill Voss for the 151 Lake Drive. You answered a lot of questions. But I think most of your numbers for traffic are correct. And some years are correct, too. The problem is they're not realistic to real life. When I get on 202 and 926 in the morning, I'm going to do the pressure. I'm not stopping this test. I'm going to go all the way through. Depending on the day, well, in February, 202 fill up. It was still up from 926 all the way up to the squeeze belt. And that happens about twice a month or almost a month. Maybe twice a month or almost a month. And depending on his cars, it's 15 to 20 minutes. If it's uh, trucks, it's over 45 minutes. My question is, how do I get a realistic answer as to how to solve this problem? Where do I do this on? Because if you put your development in, you've got nice numbers, try this to be a zoom. It's not going to work, period. No matter what it says. If I could, to some, to some of these issues, um, and again, Kristen gave a nice <laughs> Kristen gave an excellent explanation about the process we're here for relative to Toll Brothers and the conditional use. The township is working with PennDOT to try to push forward a number of traffic improvements. We have the project that was supposed to, or that is proceeding at 926 and 202. However, what you're hearing a lot of concern here is that project is held up in the balance between transportation and historic resources. The township is working with PennDOT and DVRPC to try to get program improvements to the ramp that goes from local 202 up towards Matlock to get that to be two lanes because that's one of the bottlenecks. Um, there's a number of elements where the township is working to improve traffic, some with what they can do, like what happened on Jackman Drive, and some where they've got to try to work through PennDOT and the county to get things done. A lot of that is happening. However, once you get past a certain limit of this development, they told brothers as much as we would like to get them to do as much as possible. There are some things that we're just not in a position to compel them to do. Um, Kristen mentioned the Commonwealth Court decision. In the previous decision, the Planning Commission, commission recommended and the board was considering further, you know, a more forceful stance at 926 in New Street. Um, and the court, you know, based on the court direction, we've got to take more of a, an encouraging approach to PennDOT to try to get that done. So it's not that we don't hear you. I think there's no one on the township side that's going to say traffic isn't an issue. Um, but with respect to what we're doing you know, tonight, is how much can we reasonably place um, on Toll Brothers and have it pulled up? My question, my question is what can we as residents do? 
to get Kendra Walker tough and make the thing go. Be because realistically, your your goal is to be a disaster unless that two or two things solved. I'm not trying to be a real it's not gonna work. Think that's the players. Oh, I've done that too. Well, that's where you gotta go. The woman that said that earlier, you gotta start calling ten dollars, you gotta get them to pay attention to it. Okay. Thank you. Carol Weller, 1150 Lake Drive. This isn't about traffic, too. I wanted to uh, go over the new site plan. Um, can you tell me what the difference in uh, uh, the count of single-family homes versus the townhouses has changed since the last plan? I believe our previous plan was 200 single families, and I believe our current count is 145 carriage homes, and what's that, 172? 172 single. So you're talking about 145 carriage homes and towns and 172 singles. Yeah. So it's like a little bit less than 30 singles. You knocked off 30 single family homes, about that a little bit. Oh, or, and then, uh, yes, uh, add yeah. carriage homes. Um, and then can you just explain again the red dashed line, the diagonal one that goes through the neighborhood, the dotted line? This one? Yeah. T the, tell me what that is the, the, again. Th this was a line imposed by the Chester County Planning Commission. Uh, what they are stating is the area of Craybilly where possibly Hess Hessian soldiers right. cross. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just... I'm just kind of hoping or thinking that the townhouse houses would have less of a population, uh, cars, environmentally. 